Fitter and Longer with The Fitness Show, hosted by fitness expert, author, and TV personality, Fitz Kohler. She'll tell you why diets are dumb, supplements are snake oil, and the truth about how you can earn a lean, hard, pain-free, and athletic body. Now for our favorite bossy blonde, Fitz Kohler. Hi team, I'm Fitz Kohler, your fitness expert from fitness.com, and welcome to The Fitness Show. I am in a fabulous mood today because for two days in a row, I have gone paddle boarding. <sighs> Stand up paddle boarding, which is my hobby. It's the thing I love to do. In fact, anything on the water is the thing I love to do. But I happen to have a big, blue, beautiful paddle board and I love using it. The great gift of being here in Florida is really year round, you can get the use out of it. But my kids are away at summer camp, so I have a little more wiggle room to go do it um, at my leisure. So I went yesterday, I went to Crystal River, and today I went uh, paddleboarding down the Santa Fe River, and two very different experiences. Crystal River is, I don't know, it's by Homo Sasso, which also means nothing to you because it's in the who the hell knows part of the state, but it's over by the Gulf and it's actually a fine little town and the river's really fantastic. You get into, um, when you go to Crystal River and you launch, it, the water is brackish. It's a combination of spring fed water, lake water, and then the Gulf is intermixed in there. But what that does is provides us the opportunity to really enjoy some pretty cool animals. And so got in the water at about one o'clock and it's interesting because there's thunder in the background as I'm sailing out from the launch point and only Floridians hear thunder and keep moving. You know, thunder doesn't always equal lightning. So off we go, you know, paddle boarding out into the, <laughs> into the lake river thing. Um, but went to a spot called the Three Sisters. And so while most of the lake, it looks like a big, massive, round lake with some fingers that branch off into neighborhoods, which have canals. And so you're, you're really paddling through people's backyards. There's people on boats. There's um, people on jet skis. There's canoers, kayakers, yada, yada. Lots and lots of people out there. But when you go into this section called the Three Sisters. They don't allow boats back there, but I was able to paddle right through the little barriers, pylons, and it's beautiful. All of a sudden the water becomes crystal clear and it's fairly shallow. You can stand at most places in there and it's just, it's gorgeous. It's cold, it's really cold because it's spring water, which I believe is 72 degrees year round, something like that, whatever it is, it's far too cold for me, but it really is that's where the crystal comes from. You look straight down, you can see every rock, every pebble. Saw a big blue crab while I was there and um, hung out in that section for a while until one of the uh, fish and wildlife guys goes, hey, you know, there's lightning over the trees, which I didn't know. So start headed back towards my launch point and there's not only lightning, but now there's lightning, which feels like it's hitting 50 yards behind me. So being a smart person who has grown up about around lightning her whole life. What are, I think Florida were the lightning capital of the USA. So I got out and hung on the side for a while. Now you get out and yes, I'm not standing in the water like a complete, and that's your Ben Franklin moment really when I'm, I'm standing on top of the water paddling and there's lightning striking around me. So I get out. Um, but then you're not supposed to <laughs> be under trees either. And so I got out on the only spot I could find that wasn't someone's backyard, um, but there were palm trees nearby. So, you know, what can you do? So I sat on the side, read some notes, letters home from my kids, and um, then the lightning calmed down. I got back in, but I decided to go back towards the launch point and then just paddleboard around there because if lightning came back, we'd be able to get out. And so I was near the launch point in this, it looks like a cul-de-sac, you know, a cul-de-sac of water and the sturgeon are jumping, jumping these, they look, they're three feet silver fish and they're 
or three foot long silverfish and they're leaping through the water. It's so cool. And you know what's interesting is because you see them out of your quarter, the corner of your eye going jumping and you go, wow. But then you look and it doesn't happen. You look away. The second you look away, you can hear the splash of the sturgeon. So potentially they were messing with me, but um, a boat came by, which was a manatee tour. And so what happens is in the winter here in Florida, the manatees come because they migrate. And if you go to Crystal River in November, December, January, you will see hundreds of manatees. And what amazing animals they are. They're massive, but they're sea cows. They're harmless. They eat seagrass. And they're so sweet. And they're, they're protected here in Florida. You're not supposed to drive your boat fast around them. I think you're not supposed to touch them, um, which I will not um, confess or not confess to doing. But... Um, I'm on the paddleboard, and the boat captain, he has only two guests on his boat. He goes, hey, do you see the manatees? And they're not normally very easy to find in the summer. I said, no. He said, right in front of the boat, there's two. There's a mama and a baby. And so I get my, I hook my um, paddleboard, tie it to a pylon, get my vest on, my life vest, and then I get in because what the people off the boat were had... Uh, pool noodles so they could just hover and they had goggles and so I had goggles and my vest and so I swam over and all of a sudden I'm on top of the mom she's got to be a thousand pounds she's massive and even the tail her tail is at least the size of a man's back I mean it's huge and her baby is about 500 pounds and I'm getting this information from the boat captain who said that's a mom the baby's about a year old so I'm buying the information because that's what he's telling me but it was so cool to just hover over them, and every minute or so, they would lift up, get their mouth out of water for air, and then go back down. He said they were sleeping. So again, I'm taking his word for it, since he was the quote-unquote manatee expert, but um, wow. They were so sweet, and to just spend about 20 minutes of quality time with them, and I am not going to confess to touching a manatee, because that would be wrong, but if I were to do that... It would be very cool and exciting. So I obviously did not do that, but they were right there and touching distance, and it was very, very special. Uh, so yeah, I got to, oh, I got to finish that. But before the manatee, while I was trying to escape the lightning, a dolphin started leaping next to me, literally paddleboarding with a dolphin doing little circles and the, um, his dorsal fin was coming through the water nearby. It was just a great day. So ah, paddle boarding. There's lots of really fun, wonderful things to see out on the paddle board. Now, on the flip side, you've heard my horror stories out paddle boarding. Today, I went to Lake, uh, Lake Santa Fe or yeah, Santa Fe River and I did a six mile loop. <laughs> but as I was getting in my launch point, the lady who worked there, she said, you know, it's, it's breeding season for the gators. And I thought, Jesus Christ, could you stop? Could you not tell me that? Because I've already been chased by a gator out here. Now, of course, I blame my friend Thor. It was his fault. If he hadn't rammed into that gator, the gator probably wouldn't have come after me. But um, yeah, I didn't see any gators today. Thank goodness. It was just beautiful. It was probably had to be about 90 degrees. And where most people loathe the sticky and loathe the sun, I, I'm a solar panel. I just feed off of it. It's my favorite feeling. I really like it when sweat comes down your arms and you're doing nothing. Sweat's coming, sweat drops down my tummy. Love that. So it was a beautiful day. And what I realized this summer is I am always smelling like some concoction of sunscreen and off. And so with that, I wanted to share my favorite versions of those things because I, here in Florida, you got to have one or the other. And I'm sure in other places, hopefully you're wearing your sunscreen too. I don't know if bug spray is always this big of an issue, but um, I'm fending off mosquitoes at night and um, sun cancer in the day. But my favorite sunscreen in the world, and I'm adamant about sunscreen, is called NOAD. It's N-O-A-D. And it comes in a big turquoise spray bottle. It's huge, maybe 32 ounces. I buy it for, I don't know, seven bucks at my grocery store or CVS or Walgreens. 
and it's way, you get twice as much as you do of Copper Tone or any of the other brands. Smells like coconut, and it works like gangbusters. It's, you know, SPF 42,000. You know, there's a kid's version, whatever, but no ad. And the reason they can charge so little or give you such great prices is because they don't advertise. And I love this stuff. I do not work with this stuff. I don't know anybody at the no ad company. In fact, I know nothing about them other than for years, I have been buying dozens and dozens and dozens of bottles of their sunscreen. I buy it all year round. I probably buy at least 25, 30 cans a year. And I feel really good about it. And it works. And it works when you're just outside coaching soccer. And for me, if I take the kids to a water park and we're being aggressive and things are rubbing up against our skin, it also still works. So I reapply, reapply, reapply. If we're vigorous in the pool or the ocean, I probably put it on every 30, 40 minutes. Um, but I love it. So no ad. Look for that and support the company that's saying, hey, we're going to give you a great product at a great price just because we're eliminating the marketing budget. And then we use off, and I'm sure everybody's using off. Is it off or cutter? Well, what I really like is one that comes in a light blue bottle, and it's called dry spray. So it's not the pump. It's just an aerosol, and it goes on dry, and it doesn't smell like anything. So that helps. I mean, it, again, I smell like a bunch of funky stuff on first summer, and it's just because we're athletic and outside a lot. But this off, light blue can, it's dry aerosol spray, and it goes on, and, and nobody will know you're wearing it. So that is my product endorsement for the day. Actually, people have been asking about a lot of different products, and, I, you know, obviously I'm privy to trying out a lot of products. Sometimes companies send things to me and because I'm in athletics and I, I host races and things, I get to dig up some stuff. One of the other products I did want to tell you about it before I get into the bulk, the meat of the show, is uh, my friend John Brown. He was an anchor here at Fox Orlando where I used to do fitness segments for them and now I think he's in Kansas City. I could be wrong. Anyways, he's a runner. He's a marathoner. He does the Disney races. He does rock and roll. I don't know. He's just a runner. And so, uh, oh, and he's such a glamour guy too. I mean, he's, he's a pretty boy. What do we call him? Metrosexual. He's always got the hair done right. He's got sharp suits. He's always wearing the fancy socks. He's a sharp dressed man, but you know how when you put on a bib for a race and you have to put the safety pins in your shirt and all of a sudden you have these holes in all of your shirts. And sometimes I'll be putting a, a pin through my shirt thinking, Jesus, I hope it doesn't I hope it doesn't rip. You know, I worry. I haven't had too many problems with holes, but I, I know a lot of friends do. So John created a product called Bib Magnets, and he uses those really strong magnets. I, my son made me buy some of them off the internet just so he could play with them. But really strong magnets, and they're cute. They're in various colors. You can order a silver set or a red and blue or pink or green, whatever. Anyways, they're great products. You just... Put the one magnet on the outside of your bib and the other magnet behind on the inside of your shirt and then boop, it clips together and they don't move. They're really strong magnets and then you just take them off when you're done with the race. Nothing's been destroyed and especially if you guys save your bibs, you can, uh, you can make sure you're not tearing your bibs. But bibmagnets.com, um, John's been telling me about them forever. I finally got myself a set. And then he offered a discount for my audience. So if you go to bibmagnets.com, 10% off, use the discount code FITS. Uh, but he's a really good guy. He's a dad, he's a, he's a great husband, and he's a great news guy, and a great runner, and an entrepreneur. And as an entrepreneur, I really respect that and admire John, because he's, he's a sweet potato. I like him a lot. So Bib Magnets, check that out. I've had a few great questions come to me this week, and uh, I thought I would address them. I like the question and answers. I like it when you guys help me with that. Um, <laughs> one of my hotties has reached out to ask, how do you deal with an unfit spouse? So this, this hottie is someone who's come a long way with fitness, uh, accomplished a lot, but this person is very worried about the spouse because the spouse is completely not on board and going in the opposite direction. And so I get that question a lot. And one of the things I want to tell you is you can't change the other person. 
You can't force it upon them. Fitness is something people have to want themselves. And so if your wife or your husband is overweight, trust me, they know it. They know that they're not in good shape. They know it when their pants are tight. Um, it's hard. It's really hard. I would have a hell of a tough time if I was married to someone who was completely out of shape and un into taking care of themselves. In fact, if I was dating a person like that, I would have to break up with that person. Does that make me sound like a mean person? Maybe. <laughs> I'm sure I've said a lot of things that make me sound like a mean person. But, you know, having someone who takes care of their health is very important. I would not date a smoker. I would not marry a smoker. I would not marry or date an a holic, whether they're an alcoholic or even someone who smoked pot. I don't, I don't know. You smoke pot in front of me. I'm not marrying you. Period. I'm not dating you. Period. We don't get to dinner if I see you at a party and you're, you're smoking weed because I just have those particular standards. So if you're someone who eats junky food and rejects exercise, we're clearly not a match. Um, so maybe you're in the marriage and you've done this till death do us part deal. And so how do you deal with that? So encouraging is the first start, hey, I'm really concerned about my health and I've been exercising. Gee, I'd love for you to join in with me. That's a great way to do it. Make it an invitation. Make it sound fun. Give them the offer, option. You know, I'd like to start exercising. Would you? What would you like to do? You know, maybe you really want to go do CrossFit, but your partner wants to do yoga. Okay, well, start wherever they want to start because, again, it sounds like you're you're um, you're on board, and if they're not, you know, we're going to start the sweet way of saying, hey, how can we get you on board? Um, you can also be honest. You know, I assume if you've married someone, you're okay and comfortable with awkward situations. It's, <laughs> I'm going to tell you another weird story, kind of off base, but on base. My daughter, we had the sex talk. Oh my gosh, it was about a year ago, and... Um, yeah, so we had the sex talk, and then I gave her some specifics on diseases and safety and pregnancy, but, you know, kind of the nuts and bolts, too. And she goes, oh, is that why the lion gets on the lioness's back? And I said, well, yes, <laughs> that's mating. That's what they do. I go, but normally with humans, humans face each other when she's doing that. And she goes, well, that's awkward. And... I was like, yes, it's ex it can be extremely awkward, and that's why you want to wait until you're married to do this thing, because boy, would it be awkward with someone you weren't married to. So anyways, marriage should be, you know, full of, um, uh, full of comfortable, traditionally awkward moments, right? If you're going to go get naked in the room, get it on with this person, I'm sure they've seen you throw up, I'm sure they've heard you in the bathroom with diarrhea, I'm sure... You've gone through hell and back with your spouse. You Got to be able to talk about health too. And so, be honest. You know, boy, I I want to spend forever with you, and you know, forever can be finite. But I'd like our forever to last as long as possible. I know you don't love exercise, and I I know you really haven't been on board with my healthy eating efforts. But could you help me out here? Because boy, do I love you. That's that's probably the best place to start. And, you know, you're, you're not to pick on the person's body. That doesn't help. Uh, you know, I would be attracted to you if you were of ideal weight. That's a hard one to push, too, because, again, it's your spouse. You're supposed to um, love them no matter what. But I also can imagine, you know, just not being attracted to someone who doesn't take care of themselves. So I'm going to leave that up to you, honesty, with a little bit of... Um, I don't know. I'm not lying, but you could leave some of the ugly parts out. But yeah, just try. Just try. And then you have to realize that at some point you're going to leave it in their hands. You know, if they're saying, I don't want to talk about it. I hate exercise. I hate your healthy food. I like being overweight. In fact, I may go pick up sunburns and smoking. Oy, then, you know, then you back off. Um, but it's tough. I would just encourage you to keep offering up the invitations, making it sound fun. You know, if you're if you want to backdoor the whole thing, forget the gym. You know, boy, our dog seems stressed. 
You want to take the dog out for a walk with me? You know, boy, it's hot outside. Want to get in the pool? Oh, this is my favorite song. Do you want to dance? There's, there's some other ways to get people up and moving without getting them up and moving. And then maybe you can sneak in some healthy meals where, I don't know, they don't realize how healthy they are. You know, I have a, I have a really good recipe for low-fat nacho supreme. And so I use baked tortilla chips. I use low-fat cheese. I use onions, tomatoes, bell peppers. Those things are naturally healthy. Black beans, naturally healthy. Grilled chicken instead of um, yucky shredded meat or fried meat. And then what else? Salsa on the side. So it's actually a pretty healthy dish I'm serving up. So you could just do that behind your spouse's back by baked chips. Grill the chicken. Maybe you, gr you bread chicken and bake it. Maybe you bake the french fries at home instead of frying them. So you can be creative, maybe trying to just provide your spouse with healthier versions of the things they already like. Um, I was listening, I have Sirius Radio, which I love, I love, 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 love. And I happened upon Jenny McCarthy has a show. I don't know when it's on. It was some night I was driving home and she was saying something inappropriate. So it caught my attention and I was listening and she was talking about her son who has autism. I know, Jenny was talking with two moms who have some sort of mommy website and they're sarcastic and funny. So they were all talking about mom stuff, but she was telling her son who has autism, who I believe is going to high school soon, she told him that he is allergic to drugs. So he can't do drugs and he can't drink because he's allergic. And I thought, that is genius. That is so genius to just tell your kid, hey, you're completely allergic to marijuana or crack, whatever it is, because kids are vulnerable, right? They'll believe the parents and um, anything you can do, obviously, to get them to avoid doing drugs and drinking too much is ideal, right? I'm not above it. And it made me think back to where Ginger was about two years old. She loved broccoli. She even would eat frozen broccoli. I kid you not, I would get the bags of little broccoli florets and she wanted to eat them frozen. It was so weird. But I also wanted her to try uh, cauliflower and she refused. And so I made up a little lie. I said, Ginger, this is cauliflower. broccoli. It's not cauliflower. This is different. This is cauliflower. broccoli. You wanna try it? And she did and it worked. She liked the cauliflower broccoli and so my white lie turned into some great way to get her to enjoy some cauliflower. And she also loved blueberries, but wouldn't give raspberries a try. So I called them ras blueberries and she gobbled them up. And so is lying always the good choice? <laughs> no, but does it work for us sometimes? Is it a really great option on occasion? Absolutely. So, you know, Go underhanded about it if it's really important to you. I mean, I, I want your spouse to be fit too for all the reasons. We want them to live long. We don't want them to be diseased. I think what many people fail to consider is that when they get sick, their spouse is the one left paying the price. You know, they get sick, they have surgery, you're going to be there in the hospital every day, running back and forth, living, sleeping in a chair, not being able to get a shower. You know, when they're weak and they've not exercised and they've fallen and broke their hip, guess who's going to be trying to help lug them from the bed to the wheelchair, to the kitchen table, to the car? That's you. When they get, you know, cancer because of their bad habits, guess who has to endure their chemo and watching their decline and it is cruel and unusual. So, oh yeah, it's a problem. It's certainly a problem. I don't know if I have all the right answers. I've got suggestions. You know, start with honesty, make it fun, make it encouraging, offer up every ounce of support you can, let them know you are there for them. You will walk them through it, hold their hand, do it side by side. You will help with the cooking, you will help with meal choices, you will Introduce them to the fitness show and help them figure out how dang easy it actually is. But at the end of the day, they're going to be the ones who have to make that decision. So I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for all of your spouses. And if you're a spouse who's listening and maybe, uh, maybe you're the one who's super fit 
and your spouse is actually trying to get fit and you don't understand why they're not already there, well, I need you to be extra considerate. I used to train this woman. I can't remember her name. It was very long ago. She was an attorney. Very sweet. She wanted to lose 30 pounds. And her husband was a professional here in my community too. And he was already of ideal weight and he couldn't understand why she didn't have her stuff together. Now, mind you, she hired me as a personal trainer. She spent I had quite a few hundred dollars a week on me. I would take her running. We'd do weights. We would do all sorts of stuff. And then every night he'd show up with brownies or Kung Pao chicken and noodles. He was constantly sabotaging her. And I finally got to the point where I thought, your husband's a big jerk. And so I had to talk with him and say, listen, she's spending a fortune on me, but worse than that, she's really trying. It's no fair to make her fight against the desperate need to gobble up the pizza you've left on the counter. You know, that scent saturates the house. So help her out. Help me help her. And don't be a jerk. And so he started changing. I think he just needed to be called a blonde, uh, called a, a jerk by this little blonde lady. But um, don't sabotage your spouse. It's, it's not always that easy for everybody. And I remember when I was overweight before I had it figured out, boy, it was really hard. I was trying and nothing was happening and, you know, there were constantly obstacles, hurdles in my way and, you know, be sweet on both sides. Be sweet. So I'll tell you something that's not sweet. And uh, Carol DeYoung, one of my hotties, posted it today, was the occurrence, and I've vented about this before, it's actually one of my greatest pet peeves at the gym. When you get, I don't know, a row of treadmills, there's 20 treadmills. My instinct is to go way far away down one to the end treadmill to try and have some privacy and be alone. I just like a little extra space. Some privacy. I read my magazine. I I listen to the music. Whatever. But it drives me crazy when I'm on the 20th treadmill and one other person comes to the row of treadmills and they get on the 19th treadmill. Are you kidding me? And so I coined the term gym snugglers. I feel like they want to snuggle with me. They're gym snugglers. Go, go alone to your space. And so Carol DeYoung had that happen to her this week. She was on a machine and some dude got on right next to her and uh, she had smoke come out of her ears. And what do you do at that point? Do you, do you look at the person and say, what are, you, what's, what are you thinking? Why are you, why are you right next to me? Go away. You can't say that at the gym. So I don't think Carol did do that. Um... Sarah Propiel, she said that she actually kind of likes being a gym snuggler because when people get on a treadmill next to her, she competes with them secretly. She'll look over and see how fast they're going and uh, try and beat them or try and beat their distance. So I understand that too, but you got to curb that behavior for when the gym's packed. You can't, if someone's on treadmill number 20 and one through 19 is empty, you can't get on number 19. But here's the deal. This is what a jerk I am. I don't know if I'm a jerk. I keep calling myself a jerk. Perhaps I am totally a jerk. But I have gotten off of my treadmill and gone over to treadmill number one when someone gets on right next to me. I just feel like I don't want to snuggle with you, you freaking weirdo. (laughs) So I don't say anything. Um, But when that happens, you betcha the person who's gotten on the treadmill right next to me stinks like a sewer of some sort. That's always my fate. Someone comes over, they're not cuddly at all in my eyes. In fact, they're completely undesirable for the cuddle. But they come on over and they they breathe their heavy bad bad breath on me and their curried meal they had the night before oozes out of their armpit. and ah, Gym snugglers. You should not be a gym snuggler. And so what are your suggestions? If someone gets on a machine right next to you, a cardio machine, Do you get off and go away, or do you just sit there and suffer through it? I've done both. I've sat through it, and sometimes I just get up and move. And then, yep, you know what? I'll give when they look at me. I give them the look that says, "You did that. That was you." Um, I I feel like I'm getting to that bold point where I'm going to say, "No, no, (laughs) no, not here. Go choose a different treadmill." I'm reserving these four. I've got three friends coming. That's it. That's actually, I was off the top of my head, but that is going to be my solution. I'm going to claim the treadmill. Perhaps I will throw towels over each treadmill or set up, I don't know, leave my phone on one treadmill and my gym bag on another treadmill. I will just occupy them 
especially if it's an empty time of day. So I'm, I'm really talking through, this is therapy for me, obviously, because I'm coming up with some great suggestions as I go. Don't you think these are great suggestions to me? I think, oh, well, we should, we should try that out as a unit. We should set up a hidden camera and um, work that situation until we find a good resolution. All right, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, and um, it came up in conversation with a friend the other day, was I, I was given a compliment on my physique, and someone said, oh, you look like you're 16, and I, and of course they were talking from the neck down, because my face doesn't look 16 anymore, but I said, thank you, but then I thought, ugh, I would not want to look like I looked at 16. I'm the only girl in the world I feel that looks better than I did at 16. Not only was I out of shape, but whoo-hee, was I an ugly girl with the with the bangs and the, the braces, oh, and the horrible makeup and the hideous clothes. It was so bad. However, what I'm really respecting right now is effort. I will take effort over age any day because you know what? There is a bunch of 18-year-olds who are in horrific shape, who eat like crap, who drink all night, who smoke cigarettes on the weekend and never, ever exercise. I don't think 18 holds any sort of candle to my 32-year-old hotties that are, you know, running half marathons every other week. In fact, they don't hold a candle to my 50-something-year-old runners or my strength trainers or any of my people that I'm training. Folks, this is effort over age. You know, none of us are getting any younger, but we can certainly make. 50, a hell of a lot better than 18 was. And, you know, uh, in the grown-up generation, I'm doing that with the finger quotes right now, we're grown-ups. I don't know how many of us in our teens were lifting weights appropriately and running endurance races, doing triathlons. I don't know. I am not envious of my teenage self at all. In fact, I think if everyone went back, you know, some folks may think I was trimmer then or thinner, but I don't necessarily think that's better. I've got Anna Hodling. I think she's a really good example because Anna has, I think I gave her a hard time in September and since then, God, she lost, she's lost dozens and dozens of pounds. And about a few months ago, she said that she was in the dress she wore to her college graduation And so I believe that she was a smaller, you know, a thinner person or equal to whatever she weighs right now back in college. But I can't imagine college Anna was as strong and curvy and athletic as grown-up Anna is. Because I I think I saw a picture of Anna back in the 80s, perhaps. (sighs) I think think I'm recalling some shoulder pads in that outfit as well. But, um, But now she does... Man, she's literally going to the Ironman Half World Championship or something like that. I can't imagine that her college version of Anna was any better than the grown-up version of Anna. And so respect your effort. Forget the age. It just doesn't matter anymore. And they say age is just a number. I'd rather be grown-up fits over teenage fits any day. I know so much more. I have such better confidence, obviously. I love being a professional. I love being a mom. I love being in control of my life. And I feel like as a grown-up, I control most aspects of my life. And the ones I can't control, I ignore. I just like throw my hands up. I couldn't be bothered with the things I can't control. And teenage fits didn't have all of those qualities. So really, your effort is what matters most. And You know, can you be the same size you were in high school if that's a priority for you? Absolutely. But do it better. Do it better. You go pump some iron, swing some kettlebells, step around with these crazy bands strapped around your ankles. That's the way to rock your age right now. You know, these endurance sports, it's crazy to me that I show up, especially when I'm announcing races and I get that bird's eye view that there's 25,000 grown-ups who sh- paid and showed up to do this 13.1 or 26.2 mile race. It just blows my mind. So being a grown-up is fantastic. You get to be who you want to be with nobody telling you what to do. And if you have someone in your life telling you what to do besides the boss that's paying you, you need to get rid of that person because you're really just 
above it at this point, right? You're a grown up. <laughs> You're a grown up. You get to be who you want, want to be and do what you want to do. And that is that. So I think that's all I have to say today. But I hope you're all wearing your sunscreen. I hope you smell as odd as I do this summer. The coconut edition from that no ad is really quite the gift, but uh, summer has been fabulous. Oh, and just to top it off, my kids are having an extraordinary time at summer camp, which I'm so grateful for. They're not allowed to make phone calls. They're not allowed to use email, but I can email them a letter in which the camp prints out, gives to them on their bunk with an empty sheet so they can use a pen and paper and write notes back to me. And it's been really fun. They're, each of them have told me that they've water skied around the lake. They're getting up really good on skis. Uh, my daughter is going to slalom ski. That's her next thing she's working on. Um, they're zip lining. They're doing lip sync contests. And oh, I'm just, I'm so happy for that. And you know what the best part is, is I'm getting handwritten letters. And my daughter's so cute, she calls me mama. It's really cute. Hey, mama. And um, at the end, they both say, I love you so much. And the hugs and kisses. And it just fills my heart up really good. So my kids are wonderful when they're in my possession. But when they're, when they're gone, I certainly do appreciate them even more. And for some reason, when I go away, which I do, they're not sending me handwritten letters. So I think I'm going to turn that into a thing. I don't know how we're going to do that. But we're going to have to do that because it really is making me very, very happy. Anyhow, I hope you guys are having a great summer and uh, send me your questions, send me your feedback. Let me know what you think is the appropriate action to take when a gym snuggler creeps up next to you on the cardio machine. I'm at Fitness on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Facebook, and most importantly, always, please stick around and listen to my noisy pal Rudy Novotny tell you about my international uh, before school walking running program called the morning mile. Get to work everyone. Bye. Hi, this is Rudy Novotny, the voice of America's marathons. We all love how much running has benefited every aspect of our lives, so much so that most of us only wish we'd started sooner. Wouldn't it be wonderful to give the opportunity to children of today? Well, you can. The Morning Mile is a before-school walking and running program that gives children a chance to start each day in an active way while enjoying fun, music, and friends. That's every child, every day. It's also supported by a wonderful system of rewards, which keeps students highly motivated and frequently congratulated. Created by our favorite fitness expert, Fitz Kohler, Morning Milers across the country have run over 2 million miles and are having greater success with academics, behavior, and sports because of it. The Morning Mile is free to the child, free to the school, and is inexpensively funded by businesses or generous individuals. Help more kids get moving in the morning by visiting MorningMile.com. Champion the program at your favorite school or find out more about sponsorship opportunities. That's MorningMile.com. Long may you run.